back outside of Price, and he takes it for two. We saw Ryland Bergerson be the one to bring this across. Do you think it's going to be Bergerson or Landick running the point more tonight? Yeah, you'll see him, uh, and then you'll see balls come flying in. You got it. Uh, um, you, you'll see both of them play point, um, and then when Ellis comes in, he'll play some point also. So um, just you know, by committee for Eastern. Got to figure it out with Steel Venters out for probably just this game. Here's Smith. Turns around for a big three and can't get it to go, and Ethan Price is there. The good news, though, speaking of Steel Venters, talked to head coach David Riley before the game. He said that he probably could go tonight if he needed to. This is just very precautionary. Yeah, you don't want to risk it, especially going into regular season coming up here at the beginning of January. Angelo Allegri knocks down a three. Yeah, Angelo, great shot. Eastern's going to need that out of him, uh, especially down the stretch uh, in big sky play. Jello, one of those four players who went for double figures last time out against North Dakota, as that one is around and off from Taylor. Jello, 14 and 7 against North Dakota, not bad. Yeah, he, he, he's a good player, athletic, takes care of the ball, and he, I mean, he can post up, he can shoot. Back down to Akles, and he's got it for two. So nice to have Lyndon Akles back in the lineup. He was their leading scorer the first couple weeks of the year, had an injury. Richardson squares up for three and hits. Gets it back to a two-point game. But what does having Linton Eccles back in the lineup do for Eastern? What does he add? Uh, he, he's that glue guy. I mean, he, he can pass the ball. He can post up like you just saw down there against a bigger guy. Um, and he does a great job rebounding. So he just brings a lot of things to Eastern uh, and experience. And Price finishes what Ryland Bergerson started. Yeah, great finish right there by Price. But Multnomah doing a good job pushing the ball. Last time Eastern got caught up in transition and gave up a three to Multnomah. Almost gave up a layup right there, not getting back. And there's Price. You know what's so funny? He was such a scoring star early in the year. The last couple of weeks, it feels like he's really found his role, which is doing whatever is needed. He doesn't need to be the star. No, he doesn't need to be star. He just needs to play solid down low and, and move the ball. And also, you, you got to make sure he stays aggressive. Um, you know, he has a tendency to pass out maybe a little bit more than he should, and he should look to score a little bit more down low, but um, he's, get, he's getting his groove, getting his role for, for Eastern. Long three from Richardson, beautiful. Back to a one-point game, his second of the night. Yeah, Richardson not, not barely had that for a second. It was going right up. Yeah, he's, he's not joking around. He averages 14 points a game. And Bergerson in the corner. That one's going back the other way. All right, so Multnomah came to play. A yes. couple of deep threes so far, feeding Richardson. They will eventually feed Eastep and Pepperger when they get into the game as well. These guys are clearly operating from downtown. That's how they think they're going to stay in this game. Oh, yeah, they're pushing the ball. They're not waiting for a great shot. They're getting a little bit of space, and they're looking to shoot. Speaking of, here's Taylor. Beautiful. And Multnomah is in the lead about three minutes into this game. How about that? Yeah, I mean, they're playing aggressive. They're not, they're not waiting for anybody. They're going to go score. Eastern, you know, last possession maybe held it a little too long, had some good looks, and trying to make a better pass. Landek trying to get through this 2-3 zone, goes back outside to Berger, said now they'll swing. Allegri out to Landek, and Multnomah can move. Got him on the travel. Got him on the travel, and Eastern has to be ready to shoot when they catch. Last couple times, moving it around, they're catching it, thinking about it, and then they're putting it down instead of being ready to catch and shoot. Uh, they have height advantage on the offensive board, so... If they're open for threes, especially Landak, he needs to make sure he, he pulls that. That height advantage, is that why Multnomah's play in the 2-3 zone early? 2-3, and they can get out and, and, and just cause com some confusion. They're going to make Eastern earn it from the outside. Here's Block. Nice move to the rack, and Taylor nearly had the rebound. Now Eastern will push, trying to retake the lead. Down low to Allegri. They keep passing off. Landak has a three. A little bit long, and there's a great board by Allegri, and they'll reset. Linton Nicolese looks for Bergerson. Takes another mid-range J, and this time he connects. Good shot for Bergerson there, but Allegri got the rebound. Could have probably gone up with the layup. Instead, kicked it out, but a uh, good shot for Bergerson there. Pretty good movement on that possession, too. Taylor goes up, and he traveled. Yeah, good defense there by Price by not bailing him out, just playing straight up, walled his man up. Um, and we got and Eastern got to travel out of it. And that'll take us to our first break. Eagles by one on ESPN Plus. It's pizza time. Who wants free pizza from Rosa's Pizza? Make some noise if you want free pizza from Rosa's Pizza.
There's a new breed of explorers taking me to discover. There's a new breed of explorers taking me to discover a hidden world. Welcome to Earth. All episodes now streaming only on Disney+. Plus. At BK, the Italian original chicken is back and in the two for six. Thanks to Pete Newbacher, crispy chicken, marinara sauce, and melty mozzarella. Because of him. For Pete's sake, the Italian original chicken sandwich is back in the two for six. Pete's way, way better. Hey, Tristan! Hey, Lexus, play holiday music. We've been waiting all year to come together. Have a happy and safe holiday season from Lexus. I told you she'd love her new 5G phone from Cricket. I see that. It's everything you wished for, including the price. All right, Eastern by one after the first timeout, 11 to 10. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you tonight by Northern Quest Casino and Resort. Mark, what do you have? Yeah, keys to the game for Multnomah. Keep pace with Eastern in the transition game and really try to limit them on fast break opportunities, Eastern. Uh, for Eastern, uh, build on the road trip. You know, they had a great road trip, uh, two and one. And then uh, control the boards. They had the height advantage. Then he continued to go inside and control the offensive and defensive boards. And Multnomah has certainly been keeping pace so far, basically at the moment because of Zach Richardson. He's taken two shots. They both went down from downtown. Yeah, uh, he did not hesitate. He's catching and shooting. If you're Eastern, you know you got to get a hand up. You know, they're here to play. They want to win. Eastern just has to eliminate those easy shots. Eastern keeps the same lineup in here after the first timeout. That's interesting. Feed down low to a Cleese, and he draws the foul. Yeah, good good drive right there by Landak. That middle is open on the Multnomah zone, and the real uh, Landak decided to pass that one off instead of shoot the layup, but um, a Cleese, good catch and shooting two now. All right, here comes Linton Cleese, the redshirt junior out of Richmond, California. So good to have him back in the lineup that the team didn't really seem quite complete without him for that stretch. Yeah, he, like I said, I've said it three times now, he, he's a glue guy. I mean, he can really rebound. He really pushes the ball. He makes everybody around him better. And so amazing that for most of this season, despite the fact that he's only six foot six, he was leading the team in rebounding. Yes, yep. He gets good position. He really uses his body well. And a good steal right there by Price. And speaking of position and using your body well, there's Ethan Price with the first steal of the game for Eastern. And I like you're looking for something to do with it here. Yeah, and you can see you can see in that zone, it's open in the middle. There's Price flashing, but it's open. No look to Allegri. Nice sequence that time, and there's the height from Eastern. We were talking about how much the height's going to help him out tonight as Price draws a foul, and a, a tall man will go to the line. Eastern clearly focusing on using that height early. Yeah, they're going inside and using the inside out game, and they have the advantage, of, you know, down low on the rebound. So when you're open, like Allegri did right there, you got to make sure you take your shots. Nice for Ethan Price. I mean, it's a big thing when you got big guys that can knock down free throws, and with the Cleese and Price. You got two big guys that that can make their free throws. Helpful to have. There are uh, other certain Division One college basketball teams in the Spokane area with big guys who are not making their free throws. <laughs> so, always nice to have for Eastern. Yeah, it, it's great to have that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here comes the Multnomah offense. They've been pretty hot from threes so far. Only down five here on the early going. Surprising Eastern's allowed a couple. They uh, they're only allowing their opponents to shoot 30 percent from three this season, Mark. Yeah. Uh, Multnomah's not waiting. They, as, soon as, they get a, as soon as they get a look, they're getting it up. And there's Block getting a look and cutting it back to a three-point game. Yeah, that's an easy drive. Just crossed it over, got all the way to the hoop. 
for Coach Riley there. You can't be happy about that. Well, Bergerson left alone and swatted away by Taryn Johnson. Taryn Johnson, athlete, Simon warm-ups. I mean, he's getting his head to the rim. You want a stat? That's his 19th block of the season. Yeah. He's long. Athletic, he almost got that one. He's, he changes shots, and that, you can already see it. He is one bouncy dude, the 6'7 freshman out of Dallas. Yeah. Athletic and long and, and changing shots. Ingram, a deep three contested, not a great shot. Don't know if that bank was intentional, but he tried it. Price the other way, that'll go back for Multnomah. Yeah, careless turnover, good look to Price. Price just missed it. Probably had a layup, probably looked to shoot it before he actually caught it, and it goes out of bounds, but Multnomah, they're, they're, they're getting it up, they're getting their shots up, and like you saw in the last three, you give them any daylight, it's going up. All right, a couple of subs for Eastern now. Tap George off the bench. Same with Ellis Magnuson, the backup point guard, getting a couple of minutes now. Yeah, Coach Riley trying to settle him down a little bit. Maybe get Ellis in there to, to get him in their offense. Man, this team is running fast. Here goes Richardson. Draws the foul. No, it's a charge. Eastern gets this one back and lucky because that was almost an and one play. It, it, it was. It was. It was a fortunate call for Eastern there. Um, they've been calling those charges this year. I'll tell you what, though. So there's Richardson. He is playing so aggressive. He's listed on the roster as six feet. I'm not sure he's six feet. He looks a little shorter in person, but, man, can he play. He's aggressive. Oh, aggressive, can shoot, and fast. I like him. Yeah. Eagles by three. Let's see what George and Magnuson can add to this lineup. Down low to Price. Crash on the zone. Can't get it to go. George pushed it away. And Ingram brings it across. And you see right in the way, Multnomah pushing the ball. They want to get quick shots. And there's the end one coming from Multnomah. What a play down low by Taron Johnson. He's a specimen, huh? Yeah, great, great move. Got his guy going inside. And as soon as this guy stepped up, spin baseline and got it right off the backboard and a chance for an and one. We were talking about Johnson's stats. How that was a 19th block there. Got another stat for you. He shoots 65%. I mean, he's he's very efficient when he gets it down there. Yeah, that's that's what that number usually means. He did a great job running the floor. As soon as that rebound came off, he was already he was the first one down, sprinting, looking to get the ball, and he got it and made a good move. All right, got a tie game again here. 15-15, 13 minutes to go in the first half, and Multnomah looking way more active and aggressive the last time these two teams played. And Casey Jones off the bench. He's working in the middle of the paint here. Down to 10 to shoot here for Magnuson. Trapped in the zone. And a timeout on the floor from Eastern Washington. 12.43 to go in a tie game. Yeah, a tie game. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Smart timeout right there going, by Magnuson. Um, double team. Teammates weren't coming to him and was able to get fortunate enough to get a timeout with eight seconds on the shot clock. No kidding. Okay, so in the early going here, Multnomah, this is the kind of time of the game where a team like them can keep pace. Yes. Do we anticipate they can keep this up, or is Eastern eventually going to wear them down? You know, you let a team in early like this, and they keep pace, their confidence continues to grow and grow. So Eastern's going to have to step up and get some stops and, and look to score uh, in transition on that zone for Multnomah. Um, otherwise, you know, confidence is a huge thing. You see, them going, you see shots going, you're going to keep shooting them. And uh, unless Eastern gets a hand up and pushes the ball, it's going to be a struggle. For what it's worth, Multnomah at the moment shooting 60% as a team. They've put down six of their 10, as that one won't go from Eccles. Yeah, here they are pushing the ball again. They move the ball really well for an NAIA team. Yeah. They're just they're spread out, four on one, dribble drive, and then here comes the ball screen. That's Kel a steep. A step, rather, in off the bench. A huge deep three from Richardson. I love the confidence. Yeah, it almost went in. Easy look to Eccles. And that's what you have to do. Eccles sealed early. He didn't get the ball, but he stuck with it. And Magnuson was able to get him down low. But like I was talking about earlier, they got to score in transition versus zone. They can't let the zone get set up. Wallace Unwillock running the offense, number one out top, finally coming in off the bench. Ingram puts up a three, and it's rebounded by Eccles. And they'll push. Eastern all of a sudden starting to bring up the pace to match Multnomah. And you have to do that versus zone. you got to push him. Don't let him set up. Try to get easy shots. Bergerson steps back for three. 
Tap George comes flying in, gives them a second chance. Took away Bungawilla. Yeah, that's great hustle by Tap right there. And that'll take us to our second break. Eastern only by two. Multnomah hanging in on ESPN Plus. We can't help you perfect your pie crust or bake the world's greatest banana bread. But we can help you find the sweet spot between your everyday expenses and your retirement goals. With our guidance and insights, we'll help you put together a recipe for the retirement you want. At T. Rowe Price, we know retirement, not baking. Explore your options with our financial consultants today at tRowPrice.com. This is your living room slash yoga shanti slash regional office slash and this is the basement slash panic room. Maybe what your family needs is a vacation home slash vacation home. Find yours on the Verbo app. Come in for holiday essentials. Leave with something irreplaceable. I told you I was gonna win. <laughs> With Windows 11, gaming performs to another level. Let's go! And when it comes to streaming movies, we haven't really experienced any buffering. It's so cool that we'll have access to movie theater level quality pretty much anywhere. Seeing it load up that quick, I was genuinely surprised. I can't believe there's no lag. I didn't realize how bad you were until I got these really good graphics. <laughs> Here on ESPN Plus, Multnomah really hanging with Eastern Washington 17 to 15. Uh, Mark Axton, that was not the case the last time these teams played. No, it wasn't. 146 to 89, but I mean, 89 is still a lot of points to score. Uh, but Eastern really got it going inside with Mason Peedling when they last time they played. They had our own version of the NBA All Star game out here, didn't we? <laughs> exactly. 54 points. That is a lot of points yeah, in college basketball. Meanwhile, back here on the other side of the floor, Eastern again only up two. The good news for the early going here, first half of the first half, out-rebounding Multnomah 11-5, to five, although that's not really a surprise given Eastern's height advantage. No, it's, it's not a surprise at all. They, they, they should be doing that. Um, they just have to take care of the ball. Um, four to two on turnovers. They're losing that battle. Good passing through the zone here from Eastern. Here's Jones with the left hand. Uh, great move right there by Jones. Took his time, really did a good job sealing, didn't rush it. As Soon as he got the angle, was able to go by his guy. Johnson, little jumper won't go and yanked down by Jones. Speaking of guys, we talked at the top of the broadcast about the effort and the hustle Mason Landek plays with. Casey Jones, also just a pure effort freshman. Yeah, pure effort, does a good job boxing out and just hustles after every loose ball. Got some contact down low there between Bergerson, Jones, and a couple players on the Lions. And for Jones not being so tall, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, um, you know, he does a great job rebound. He's very athletic. For guys only six foot six, he gets up there. He has a wingspan, yeah. doesn't he? Yep. There's a foul on Estep, his first. 44 fouls on Multnomah, still just one on Eastern. And Magnuson to inbound. Yeah, if you're Eastern, you continue to go inside and play that inside out game versus zone. Jones, aggressive and put back there from Riley, rather than Price. Jones just going straight into his guy, trying to trying to get a foul, but missed it. But Price right there to, to finish it. Ushemi, three won't go. Johnson goes up hard, and he'll get two. He is a bouncy dude for a freshman, huh? Bouncy and athletic. I mean, he he, he does a great job on the on those offensive boards, and he does a good job running the floor to get those. Um, looked like good a good defense right there for Price. Looked like it was straight up, but we got the foul. It's always so funny now with the advent of the new NCAA one-time transfer rule, you know, Mark, when you play a team like Multnomah in previous years, you might not have thought anything of it, but you know, now if you're Eastern, you could be like, oh, that guy could be good if, if too many guys transfer out, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you take notice. And, and his shooting percentage, his athletic ability, I mean... He has a lot of potential. Certainly for a true freshman, that guy can play. Deep tap George. 
a little bit long. Allegri for the rebound. Magnuson didn't want to shoot. Back in the game, Landek, he wants to shoot, and he's got it for three. A great decision right there by Magnuson. I mean, he could have shot that three, but he gave it up to his shooter, and they were able to finish it. But again, Eastern has the height on those offensive boards, especially on zone. When you go against zone, it's hard. It's hard to box out, and Eastern's taking advantage of that. And Landek's going to push here for Eastern. They don't have numbers. Magnuson. Not a bad shot. George there for the rebound. It, it, it's kind of obvious, though, the further along we get into the season here, Mark. Uh, Magnuson does not want to shoot. Yeah, he doesn't want to shoot. Even though he's a good shooter, he wants to get his teammates open and try to create scoring opportunities for them. Much prefers to pass. Here's Ingram. A little bit of space through the zone, and Johnson there to finish. Yeah, good driving kick right there. Drop to the big guy, able to finish it. I think we're going to be watching Johnson for the rest of the night. It feels like they've got something with him in this particular game. Pure block, no foul on Jones. Yeah, Jones just going in there. Didn't see the weak side help. Uchime, blocking foul. Eastern bench not happy. David Riley talking to the ref saying, come on, not even a chance. But instead, this will stay with Multnomah. That's going to be a foul on it. Looks like Tap George as Uchime goes to the line. Yeah, again, Multnomah getting him, getting points in transition. They're doing a fantastic job pushing the ball, not letting Eastern's defense set up. Good replay, guys. And that's a good call. That's a good call. Landek was moving as his guy was going to the basket. Sent him scooting, huh? He went about 10 feet on the ground. And Amanda Uchime does not get the front, although we have a foul on the come down. This will be on Multnomah. Yeah, Johnson trying to go out for that offensive rebound. He's not letting up. He wants to, he wants to get buckets. And that one is on Taryn Johnson. The good news, that's already a second foul if you're an Eastern fan, at least. Yep. So back into the game comes Tyrese Taylor, who we've already said is an rebounder. Shoots 60%, nine boards a game, almost 15 points a game. It is funny, though. Like he was already kind of out overshadowed in the first couple minutes here by... Yeah. By, by Taron Johnson, the freshman. Yeah. He did a good job when he came off the bench and scored there. Johnson did. Landex straight to the referee. Not a bad pass, but to the referee. To the referee, and he, he was expecting his teammate to move on that zone and probably should have. But again, Eastern has to take care of the ball. They, have to, they, can't, they can't turn it over with the guy not even on them. Multnomah shooting just shy of 50% as a team. That one probably should have gone. Landek up to Magnuson here and leaves it for George. Deep three won't go. He'll have a second chance, though. Oh, yikes. Comes careening in. That is definitely a charge. And a couple of words exchange as they get up. Yeah, definitely a charge right, right there for Tap. Probably should have gone off two and just tried to float it up instead of go over the big guy. Because Taylor's a big boy. I mean, yep. like we said at the beginning of the game, he looks like he, he should be a tight end <laughs> in the NFL. All right, so here comes Multnomah. It's interesting, Mark. You, know, you and I were talking at the beginning of this game about the difference in talent between the NAIA, D3, D2. This looks like a team that would beat a lot of teams in the Northwest Conference, Whitworth's League. Yeah, they have a lot of athletes. They can shoot, as you've seen. That was Block. Yeah, great shot right there by Block. He had a good and one, too, a couple now, possessions ago. To Landek in response, a little bit long. But it, again, it feels like this is a team that would uh, compete at the D2 or D3 level. Like, these guys can play. Oh, yeah. They can play. And we talked about earlier, Division Three. It's, it's tough to get scholarships. NAIA, they have scholarships. So you can get some, some, some good players in there. Working through the zone, nice move by Landek, the freshman. Yeah, Landek, good strong move. I mean, he, he, he's not big, but he played big down there. And if you're Eastern, you gotta get stops. Now, you're there is no such thing as a quiet Mason Landek game as Taylor rattles home a two. But it is funny, you know, since that Wazoo game where he had the game of his life, the true freshman at Azilla scored more than 20 against the Cougs, still been playing hard, still been playing aggressive, hasn't done a lot of scoring. Yeah, well, they're not leaving him open. They know he's a shooter now. When you come in and people don't know Ouch. how you're going to score. Takes an elbow to the face. He'll get two at the line. Yeah, good ball fake there. One dribble shot there. 
Um, but, you know, you come in as a freshman, they don't know what you can do, and he was able to do that uh, versus Wazoo. Well, we'll see what Landa can do on the other side of this break. At the moment, though, still just Eagles by one on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome to the brand new Big Sky Conference app, currently available on the Apple App Store for iPhone users and the Google Play Store for Android users. Let's take a look at what the app has to offer. First, let's look at schedules. Every schedule for our various sports can be found on the app. You also have the ability to search by a specific sport or by a specific team to find exactly what you're looking for. On the video section, you will be able to access all of our most recent YouTube uploads and you'll also be able to break down the playlist by sport. Our standing section gives you the ability to check out the most up-to-date standings for our sports with just a touch. The home menu has several useful links including direct access to our various social media platforms and our partners like ESPN. Sport-specific pages will have the most recent news from each sport and has additional links that will vary sport by sport. The app is fully customizable. You can choose what sports to follow and what order they'll appear. You can also choose what kind of notifications you will receive. But don't worry, just because you don't follow a sport doesn't mean you won't be able to access it. And we recommend keeping those notifications on for special promos you won't get anywhere else. Be sure to elevate your mobile experience with the Big Sky Conference app, available for download on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store today. Welcome to... Well, tonight's game on ESPN Plus is brought to you by Numerica Credit Union, the official credit union of Eastern Athletics. Live life, live well. All right, back here, 26-25 Eastern on top of Multnomah. Last time these two teams played, Eastern put up almost 150 points. This time, Multnomah hanging close with them. Uh, Mark, why is that so far? You know, the big thing has been their zone, but also the shooting percentage. Uh, Multnomah shooting 50% from the field, Eastern's at 35, and then uh, Eastern's only two for 11 um, from the three-point line. Also notably, Eastern out-rebounding Multnomah 19 to nine, but you know when you look at second chance points, not quite enough to justify that double-digit de deficit, right? No, uh-uh, it, it's just the shooting percentage. That's what's, that's what's hurting Eastern right now, the 50% for Multnomah and only shooting 35. They're getting, Eastern's getting more shots, but they're just not hitting a higher percentage of them. It is so interesting when you think about the fact that they're playing this game tonight without their star shooter, Steel Venters. I wonder if Multnomah would have the guts to run the 2-3 zone if Venters was playing, you know what I mean? Yeah, Venters brings a lot a lot to the to Eastern, especially his outside shooting. Here's Allegri. Tried to do that one all himself, and now he's caught in the zone. And Bergerson, rather, El Kugia can't make him pay. The true freshman now in off the bench out of Seattle. Getting his first minutes at this game as Carter elevates for three, and Magnuson there for the board. Good board there by Magnuson. Akalise back in off the bench, and Eastern's slowing it down now. Six and a half minutes to go in the first. Not sure anybody thought this game would be this close. Yeah, if you're if you're Allegri last possession, you got you got to get the shot up. You had your guy beat and just decided to kick it out. Akalise. Nice turnaround move, but Carter there for the rebound. The 6'4 freshman out of San Diego. Yeah, Multnomah Zone is really giving Eastern some struggles right now. Which is surprising because Eastern, they're averaging 78 points a game right now in non-conference play. That's the second best offense among the Big Sky teams. Yeah, but right now they're not shooting high percentage three-pointers. Uh, that's what really hurts you. The zone keeps backing up until you start earning, earning you know, a man coming out and guarding you. And right now, they're hesitating on their three-pointers. They're probably not taking layups. They probably should be down low. They're just kind of making the extra pass. And they just have to be more aggressive on the offensive end. 
Yeah, if Eastern hit it four or five of these three-pointers instead of two, this is kind of a different game. Yeah, it opens everything else in the middle. There's Bergerson, nice move on the bunny. Great job getting to that middle again. That middle's wide open that zone, and Bergerson's got a couple of those floaters right in the lane. Bergerson had a hot one last time out against North Dakota, dropped 20. Taylor back and down, nice move, but the shot won't go. Rare again, he shoots 60%. Yeah, that was a good move by Taylor. I mean, got his guy where he wanted, went over his left shoulder, just left it a little short. Eastern finding some room here in the zone. Out to Magnuson, he still doesn't want to shoot, but he'll drive and finish, and it won't go. Man, that was a pretty sequence. And a late foul call here by the referee. It was flopping, so they're giving him a warning right now. Yeah, they, they said Uchimi quit it, bud. Yeah. No contact and fell down. That's going to earn you a, a warning for flopping. Number, number 11, Amende Uchemi, the sophomore out of Texas. And coming back in off the bench, Taryn Johnson. Yeah, Johnson and Taylor. I mean, both those big guys are doing a fantastic job, and the coach is doing a great job rotating them in, keep them energized. Three from the corner, good from Yusuf. His first, rather, uh, Angel Allegri. Yeah, and that's what Allegri has to do. He has to look to score. He's a great scorer. He can shoot, he can score down low, but he needs to be aggressive. And Richardson back into the game. He had a couple of minute break. Tipped away by Bergerson. That'll be Eastern ball, though. Yeah, good help side right there by Bergerson. Faked it in, was able to get a piece on the ball, and one off Multnomah there. Magnuson heads back to the bench. Landek back in off the bench. And the next dead ball. The under four will take us to immediate timeout. And if you're Eastern, you can't let up here. You got to keep attacking that zone. Keep moving the ball, but be aggressive. Just like that. Get that inside. Big to big pass. Great pass there by Bergerson. That was pretty good looking there to Linton Eccles. He's already got eight points on three for five shooting. Got a push there on defense. And it's on Linton Eccles, his first. Fifth team foul on Eastern, already six on Multnomah, so we're approaching the bonus. That's been a pretty clean game so far, though, it feels like. Oh, yeah, R uh, really clean. Refs are doing a good job. Working the perimeter, here's Uchemi. Straight up into Eccles, didn't foul him. Second chance. And there's Johnson again. Yep. Get right his hand on the boards. He's really living there. He'll get to do it again. And that was all led by Eccles having to rotate over to play help side, giving Johnson the weak side board. Multnomah doing a great job of getting to the key. They're putting their head down, getting to the basket. All of a sudden, this differential looking a little bit more like you would expect it to, an eight-point game for Eastern after it was, man, almost tied just a couple of minutes ago. Yep. In the corner. That one good, Allegri. And there's Allegri again, looking to score. Good shooter. He's able to knock it down. That, that's brought on because Molnow is pulling their zone out a little bit, trying to pressure Eastern. He wasn't scoring early on in this game. Was we have a foul on the floor. But here's Allegri coming on just the last couple of minutes. Three three-pointers. And now give him nine points on the night. And that'll take us down to another break here with 3.56 to go all of a sudden. Eastern out to a double-digit lead on ESPN+. Welcome to Allstate, where we have all new lower auto rates. And savings like that make you feel like you won the whole dang thing. Now get new lower auto rates with Allstate. Because better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click for a lower auto rate today. Vivid Seats, your ticket to more tickets. So tell your friends you'll buy because every 10 tickets earns your reward credit for next time. Earn rewards with every purchase. Vivid Seats. Life happens live. 
At BK, the Italian original chicken is back and in the two for six. Thanks to Pete Newbacher, crispy chicken, marinara sauce, and melty mozzarella. Because of him. For Pete's sake, the Italian original chicken sandwich is back in the two for six. Pete's way, way better. A mountain of toys to fulfill many wishes must be carried across all roads and all bridges. It's not magic that makes more holiday deliveries to homes in the U.S. than anyone else. It's the hardworking people of the United States Postal Service. Target makes last-minute gifting easier. Shop with same-day delivery, free order pickup, or free drive-up, and leave with your list wrapped up. Order today, get it today at Target. All right, let's take a look at tonight's Big Sky Report, sponsored by Washington Trust Bank. Football still going strong here, Mark. Yeah, still going strong. Montana State hosts South Dakota State. And then men's basketball, Montana's Cameron Parker broke the Big Sky single game record. 20 assists against Yellowstone Christian College. It's not like it was a Pac-12 school, but the record still stands. Still counts for something. I mean, 20 assists, you're doing something right. You know, your players are scoring and you're, and you're looking for them. Bummer to see us down to just one Big Sky team uh, that deep into the playoffs it, it kind of looks for a while like we might have two or three teams going to the final four yeah you had you had eastern you had montana now you have montana state late Linton mccleese there to chase down the rebound i'll tell you whenever you say eastern and montana in the same sentence now my mind just flashes back to that football game we had early on in the season that was one of the best football games i've ever seen as land deck elevates for three and uh, yusuf there for the rebound if you're yusuf you gotta you gotta look to score that you, earn, you earned it by rebounding it. This you is sweet movement here. This is how you beat the zone. It's how you beat the zone, but you also got to look to shoot. You got to take advantage of the, the rebounds. Yusuf had a great rebound underneath the basket. Just needs to go up and make the layup. And Multnomah will get this back. Three and a half minutes to go until halftime. Still hanging in, just an 11-point game. This has been a very impressive night. It has. Multnomah's done a good job just putting their head down into the basket and their bigs have done a fantastic job. Richardson's been quiet since the beginning of the game and that three won't go but again he's taken contested threes. Yeah but that one almost went in a little short you yeah. know his first first two went in. It's not like he's clanked any they've all been no, good shots. They've all been great shots. Good passing. Excellent movement to Berger so that's the stuff. That is high low action. Allegri probably could have shot it but decided to get up to his big and Akles dropped it to Bergerson for a, a nice, easy layup. Yeah, they're having good luck kind of sweeping through this zone of those little dump-off passes. Here's Akles. He grabbed his face as he went up. Uh, jump ball. Grab the ball. Yeah, jump tangled up there, and it looks like it'll be Lions' ball with 2.43 in the half. Yeah, Akles tried a Euro step around him, but kept the ball on, on the defensive side, and defense was able to grab it and tie it up. But if you're Eastern, you're, you're starting to pull away a little bit, 13-point game, but you still got to be aggressive on the offensive end. You know, they continue, they have to continue to push the ball and not let Molnoma sign up, uh, you know, set up in that zone. All right, let's see how much of a push Multnomah has with him in this next two and a half minute stretch. They're just going to feed Johnson. Got to think they'll keep doing that all night, but it's straight up rejected. That was an excellent one by Yusuf. And a long three in the corner. It's Allegri again, his fourth. Allegri, and it's throw in the corner. I mean, he's doing a good job spacing the floor, and uh, Landek did a good job of making the defense commit to him and drop it off to Allegri. Give him 12 points now, four for six from downtown to lead all scores. And Johnson there for the response. <laughs> nice move by Johnson. Back this guy down. Able to get an easy bucket. Allegri again, number five. Keep feeding him, baby. He's hot. Keep feeding him, especially in the zone. If they're not going to come out and guard him, he needs to stay aggressive. Who needs steel venters when you have Allegri tonight, right? Yep. And, and talking to Coach Riley, he, he can do that. He can shoot. He just hasn't been as aggressive on the offensive end. Land at crash, and it's intercepted. Ferris takes a tumble. And this will go back Eastern's way. Yeah, Landick just needs to slow down. He did a good job getting to a jump stop. We just need to take a little more time to distribute it to his teammates. 
Well, this seems like it came on pretty fast. It feels like it was just a couple of minutes ago. It was 19 to 17, and here we are now, Eastern, starting to push a 20-point lead. And, and for Eastern, Allegri's doing that. Five three-pointers, you know, three of the last three possessions. That's huge. Don't let him pull again. Can't have them all. And yeah. the three-point hot streak, which was, I believe, 3-0 and for Allegri, for Allegri ends uh, at three in a row. But it's still that, that corner spot he likes. He's spotting up there, and he's getting open. I'd let him keep going. Here's Richardson. Nice move to the rack, and it's yanked down by Michael Falarin, finally in off the bench, getting his first minutes in a couple of games, it feels like. Here's Landek. And they'll slow it down. One minute to go here in the half. 15 on the shot clock for Landek. Foul on the defense. That'll be on Unwillock, his first personal. Yeah, Landek doing a good job trying to punch, punch it on the zone on his, off the dribble. You know, he's getting to the middle, but he just has to get to a jump stop and be a little bit stronger on those passes. But he's getting to the free throw line because he's staying aggressive. So here's Landick at the free throw line. Two for two so far. And he'll make it three. And give him eight points so far. It's good news. Looks like he'll make double digits by the end of the night for the first time in a little while. Yeah, pick up his confidence. He's shooting the ball well. And inside a minute to go in the first. And if you're Multnomah, you don't have your two bigs in right now. So, you know, where's that offense going to come from? They're spreading out right now. Five out. Eastern move to his own. Yeah, a little foul trouble in the first half for Johnson and Taylor. Uchieme, nice turnaround move. And man, can Jones get up there, can't he? <laughs> he can. Super athletic. Well, I'm not sure he knew that pass was intended for Bergerson. And goes all the way. That was Ingram. And that's what Eastern has to eliminate, the, the turnovers to easy baskets. You know, instead of making the home run skip pass, just swing it up to the guard and swing it around. All right, scary start to this first half. Ends up pretty good, though. 48-31, and one last chance here for Eastern. Time for one more shot. Foul. That'll be on Richardson. Wave it off. You know, Eastern doing a good job scoring. You know, they just need to get stops and eliminate those those, those turnovers. All right, Monoma will bring in their stretchy arm, Grant Dunn, the 6'6 sophomore off the bench to play a little defense. So one and one free throws here for Eastern. That was eight on the Lions in the first half, and here's Landek for possibly two. And for Eastern here, you just want to keep Multnomah in front of you, make him, make him take a tough shot with five seconds left. And helps him out. Here's Zung Willick, four to shoot. No foul called by the refs. That one's going to go down, though. And it's going to count. All right, end of the first half. Scary start, ended up being pretty competitive. 50 to 33 at the break. Greg Talbot, Mark Action with you here. And we're back uh, with the halftime show after our interview. Coming up here in just a second. And we'll have Arturo Ormont, assistant coach, coming over here for a halftime interview. But again, Mark Axton, man, scary beginning of this half. But again, man, that was a nice turnaround by Eastern when it mattered. They put on the put on the Jets. Yeah, good turnaround for, for Eastern. All right, Coach, kind of a scary start uh, with you guys there for the first half. Uh, what turned it around midway through? Well, I think we stopped playing the way they play. They game is to shoot three, shoot a lot of threes, shoot a lot of threes, and we, we need the right guys shooting threes. So I think that's what helped us 
the right guy shooting and then attacking inside a little bit more and then getting them to play more and matching up the transition battle. Number 50, that freshman, Taryn Johnson, that dude is an aggressive, bouncy guy on the post. How do you contain him? He seems like a little bit of a problem. Well, we just got to do our work early on him, not, not be surprised by anything you do. You know, kids out here competing, he's played against good level of competition, so we just got to step it up and meet his level of intensity. Yeah, we thought you guys did a great job inside out toward the, the end of that first half, especially with Price and Allegra shooting some threes. Yes, that, we want to definitely take advantage of that. Price has should really be trying to uh, do a good job of dominating in the inside for us, so we want to look for him more in the second half as well. All right, Coach, thank you so much. 50-33 at the break. Good luck in the second. All right, thanks. All right, we'll take a break here on ESPN Plus and back with the halftime show in just a minute. Eagles by almost 20 after a scary start here in Cheney. As a professional bull rider, I'm used to taking chances. But when it comes to my insurance, I don't. I use Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And by switching, you can even save $665. Hey, Tex, can someone else get a turn? Yeah, hang on, I'm about to break my own record. Yeah! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Vivid Seats, your ticket to more tickets. So tell your friends you'll buy because every 10 tickets earns your reward credit for next time. Earn rewards with every purchase. Vivid Seats, life happens live. At BK, the Italian original chicken is back and in the two for six, thanks to Pete Newbacher, crispy chicken, marinara sauce, and melty mozzarella because of him. For Pete's sake, the Italian original chicken sandwich is back in the two for six. Pete's way, way better. Be back before. Before track, I know. Experience amazing. Dad, I'm working. What's the matter? You can't talk to your dad and work at the same time, huh? Is your new laptop not powerful enough? Oh, it's powerful. How about now? Huh? How about this? Uh, still good. Break, 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 Hey, you taking a break? I was just leaving you a message. Want a laptop that has it all? That's Intel Evo. And the blowout continues. Breaks the tackle now at Allen. He will score. The report is brought to you by Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment Made to Chill. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Greg Talbot and Mark Action with you here at halftime 50 to 33. Eastern on top of Multnomah. I'll tell you what, Mark, last time these two teams played two years ago, the halftime score was 80 to 47. Not quite as big this time. Uh, and really, it was pretty it was pretty scary early on. It was. That, that first five minutes, Multnomah really took it to Eastern. They got some easy three-point buckets. They were going inside. Their bigs are fantastic, and Johnson and Taylor are playing great. You know, but Eastern was able to pull away the last five minutes, you know, with Jello able to hit those three threes. Yeah, the, the three-point shooting and finally figuring out a way to crack that 2-3 zone that kind of screwed with Eastern for the first 10 or so minutes. All of a sudden, they found a way into the middle, then kicked yep. out, and all of a sudden, the offense got going. Yeah, it's, it's a big thing when you're able to play inside out. And there you see Jello hitting a three right there, running back. Um, had a fantastic first half. Needs to continue to stay aggressive. In talking to Coach you know, early in the season, Coach Riley, he said he was their best scorer in practice. They keep track of stats. Um, he was doing a great job, you know, early on, and now he's really stepping up these last couple games. You know, kind of the interesting thing about Angelo Allegri is, like you said, coming into this season, people thought he was going to be the big name, and then as the season started, it was guys like Ethan Price, guys like Rylan Bergerson, Steel Venters, Linton DeCleese, and then here they have a guy kind of in the background, and Angelo Allegri, who's yep. often in the starting lineup, 
but he had five three-pointers in the first half. This guy is going nuts. Yeah, he, it, it just shows you what Eastern has and how great of a job Coach Riley has done recruiting to be able to have you know, four or five guys that can score on any, any given night, which is dangerous moving into Big Sky play. I was going to say we'll talk about that a little bit more in the second half as this game starts to wind down. But with Big Sky play so close, we're almost there yep. December 30th. When you think about those big games against Montana, Montana State, the fact that Eastern has five or six guys who can really score, that's going to be a tough stop. It's going to be a tough stop. I mean, when you got that many guys that can score on a team, it's anybody's night, and they're able to step, step up on any given night, and Eastern's going to need that. All right, first half was all Angelo Allegri. Eagles up 50-33 to 33 at the break. We'll step aside and more on the other side of the break on the Halftime Show. Here brought to you by Coors Light on ESPN+. Plus. We can't help you with your passion for ceramics or macrame or wood carving, but we can provide you with relevant insights, focused guidance, and investing knowledge to help you shape the retirement you want. At T. Rowe Price, we know retirement, not crafting. Get insights for retirement investing today at trowprice.com. the bus. All right, I got you. Success is cherishing every important connection. Hey, babe. Hey. Uh, did he miss the bus? Yeah, but I was hoping he would. The Lexus LS, designed to put your humanity first. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Chicken Club is the wonderfully marinated and juicy chicken breast. The marinade actually reminds me of my mother's cooking. You know, marinades, usually they take time, and you can tell that it was put together with love. My name is Meredith, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the oven-toasted cheesy top layer. If home had a flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> This is your living room slash yoga shanti slash regional office slash and this is the basement slash panic room. Maybe what your family needs is a vacation home slash vacation home. Find yours on the Verbo app. This is your home. This is your family room slash gym. The guest bedroom slash music studio. The day bed slash dog bed. The living room slash yoga shanti slash regional office. How did you guys do it? slash classroom and this is the basement slash panic room maybe what your family needs is a vacation home slash vacation home find yours on the verbo app Karim Marie, Karim Marie, I got you some stuff for uh, for your new laptop power station dongle and a hotspot dad why because I know about technology stuff Okay, well, have you ever heard of Wi-Fi 6, touchscreen, super long-lasting battery life? Because this has all of that. But I knew, you know, you know what, I knew that. Actually, this is stuff for my laptop. Mm-hmm. I was just quizzing you. Okay. You passed, by the way. Want a laptop that has it all? That's Intel Evo. <laughs> it's everything I wished for. I told you she'd love her new 5G phone from Cricket. I see that. It's everything you wished for, including the price. All right, Eastern leading NAIA Multnomah 50 to 33 at halftime here in Cheney. Greg Talbot and Mark Axton with you. Let's take a look at our Coors Light halftime stats. And Mark, uh, as we got these handed to us, a couple things really jump out. First of all, a two for two start from Multnomah from downtown. Then they missed seven threes in a row. Yep, missed the last seven three pointers right away. And then you get the shooting percentage. Multnomah was shooting 50 while Eastern was shooting 32. And now Eastern's up to 43. And also the three pointers, you got six for 18. Um, you know, they were at zero when we were talked uh, early in the first half. Elsewhere, taking a look at the rebounds, that is as it should be. We said at the top of the broadcast that Multnomah is not a tall team. Eastern should be doubling them up, and they are. They are. They're doubling them up, and they're also, you know, second chance points. Four for Multnomah, 14 for Eastern yep. Washington. That's another big stat in there. 
and um, they, they need to continue that that second half. And if you're Multnomah, you got to continue to be aggressive and, and have confidence in your shot. Not unrelated to height, Eastern all 20 to 2. Uh, it's rather 20 to 12 in terms of points in the paint. Yeah, they're getting it down there. They did a better job the last 10 minutes of that first half, really moving the ball around and really focusing, like Coach said, at the halftime interview, they really want to get the ball inside. And lastly, also important, pretty impressive, 15 bench points for the Lions. Yeah, they came in right away. I mean, Johnson's one of those guys that was off the bench that played really well for them. Yep, the Multnomah for being a pretty small team, they're pretty deep. We'll see what they can do in the second half. Second half, when we get back, 50-33 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. We can't help you perfect your pie crust or bake the world's greatest banana bread, but we can help you find the sweet spot between your everyday expenses and your retirement goals. With our guidance and insights, we'll help you put together a recipe for the retirement you want. At T. Rowe Price, we know retirement, not baking. Explore your options with our financial consultants today at tRowPrice.com. There's cheese on a burger, and then there's cheese on a cheeseburger. Too much? <laughs> nah, don't miss the Red Robin Cheese Lovers lineup. Red Robin. Yum. This is your home. This is your family room, slash gym. The guest bedroom, slash music studio. The day bed, slash dog bed. The living room, slash yoga shanti, slash regional office. How did you guys do it? slash classroom. And this is the basement slash panic room. Maybe what your family needs is a vacation home slash vacation home. Find yours on the Verbo app. My helpers abound. I'll need you today. Our sleigh is now ready. Let's get on our way. A mountain of toys to fulfill many wishes. One more here. Must be carried across all roads and all bridges. And when everyone is smiling and having their fun, I can turn my sleigh north because my job here is done. It's not magic that makes more holiday deliveries to homes in the U.S. than anyone else. It's the hardworking people of the United States Postal Service. What a wonderful day. All the luck in the world for me. That's the way I do it. Nothing to it. Wonderful day. The future of health is not a thing that tracks your heart rate night and day, that gives you the most accurate sleep data, that tracks your heart rate during your workout, that predicts your period a month early and alerts you a week before it starts, that senses your blood oxygen levels, that knows when you might be feeling unwell, even before you do, that's water resistant up to 330 feet. The future of health is you. I told you she'd love her new 5G phone from Cricket. I see that. It's everything you wished for, including the price. Target makes last-minute gifting easier. Shop with same-day delivery. Free order pickup. Or free drive-up. And leave with your list wrapped up. Order today, get it today at Target. All right, back for the second half on ESPN Plus. Eastern 50, Multnomah at Portland 33. Take a look at our leading scores. Uh, Taryn Johnson off the bench, 11 points for Multnomah, 11 of their 15 bench points, Mark. Yeah, he has all their bench points. He does a fantastic job running the floor, staying aggressive on the post, and that's why he has the 11 points. And then you got Angelo Allegri with 15. Yeah, Angelo Allegri, all of those off threes. And then, again, Mason Landek hadn't been a huge score the last couple games following the Wazoo game. All of a sudden, here he comes. Mason Landek is back in the mix. Yeah, and that's the shooting. With uh, Multnomah running that zone, it really opens those shooters outside. And for Eastern, the bigs have kind of scored in committee tonight. Yeah, we've seen some from Ethan Price. Tap George has made some kind of an impact. Casey Jones playing very aggressively. Yeah, very aggressively. Great athlete. I mean, I think he's almost hit his head on the rim a couple times. He has, he has. All right, let's get ready to start the second half. Eastern 50 to 33 on ESPN Plus. Greg Talbot and Mark Axton with you for 
the second half. And again, this Eastern team averaging 78 points a game. And at this rate, as that one is tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with Eastern. At this rate, Mark, they're going to easily surpass that. They're on the way to 100. Yeah, on their way to 100. And you see Multnomah now going to man-to-man -to -man after the, the, the shooting performance Eastern put on the last five minutes. And you know what's always refreshing in college basketball when you have a game like this, a D1 team against an NAIA team, you're so worried that the game is just going to take absolutely forever because there's a bunch of fouls and it's a sloppy game. Even though this is going to end up being a pretty high scoring one as Bergerson converts 52 to 33, this has been a nice clean game so far. It has. It has. Both teams have done a good job on the defensive end and are really pushing the ball and getting easy shots. Excellent look that time from Taylor. A little bit long though. I'll tell you what though, uh, for a school that most people have never heard of, they've got some really good players here who could be playing at a higher level next year if they wanted to. I'm thinking Johnson, Taylor, and Richardson. Yeah, and, and, and they have the bodies for that. I mean, they're, they're big boys, especially Johnson and Taylor. A little bit long there from Ethan Price. Had a pretty good first half in terms of boards and stuff as there's the put back from Landek. Smart move right there by Landek. Had the big guy, gave him a ball fake, got into his body, and then took the shot just so he could create some space. Here's Price working on defense. I would tip that about. That'll, bad pass, actually. That'll stay with, that'll go back to Eastern, rather. But I'll tell you what's funny. Ethan Price, only eight points in the first half, but it kind of feels like if he'd wanted to, he could have had 20. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, he gave up so, some tough shots to get some great shots with, with his teammates. And here he is working the wing, the true freshman out of Ipswich, England. They feed down low to a Cleese, nearly tied up, and they'll actually say that one's just tipped away and goes to Multnomah. It's Uchime on the other end, and a Cleese there for the rebound after it was just stolen away via highway robbery a minute ago. There's Landek with some contact, and that'll be on Lions. Yeah, Cleese right there tried to get a, a good angle down low, but just showed that ball and right away block got right to it and was able to get two hands on it. But we'll see how long Multnomah stays in this man-to-man because -man, they're going to go right back down to Cleese again. Saw a lot of great play in the first half from the guards. Feels like the second half might be a lot of forwards. Well, I take it back. There's Allegri for three, his sixth three-pointer of the night. Yeah, he's not hesitating. You know, as a shooter, when, that, when you see those first couple go in, the basket gets bigger every time you touch it. Over to the corner for Smith. Now Block will move. Excellent move to the rack. He's slow getting up, and now Eastern will have numbers at least for a minute. Price over to Allegri. This would be seven. He'll stay with six. Yeah, but good look right there by Allegri. Run the floor, get wide. Teammates are able to move it to him. There's Richardson. We have a foul on the come down. That might be on Price. I'll tell you what's amazing, though. Multnomah started two for two from outside, both from Zach Richardson. They are now two for ten. So they've missed eight threes in a row. Yeah, eight threes in a row, and th but they're not hesitating. They're getting them up quick. They're looking to score right away on transition. You know, that was a quick three, but they get, they're fortunate enough to get a foul down low. bounce back there from Price as he ends up falling into the chairs in the sixth man club. He's back up and back up the floor too. Over to him. He'll take a three. Round that out. He has a couple of those tonight that nearly went down. Nearly went down. Good spacing. They had a mismatch down low with Bergerson posting up and the big guy dropped down to help him but a good shot right there by Price. A little clank and Landick there on the rebound. Not a tall guy. Six foot two on the roster. Might be a little smaller than that in person, but man, he plays so much bigger. Price tries again, and this time ring it up. That was, that was a good play by Akles. I mean, he maybe should have shot the layup, but saw the double team coming, kicked it over to Price, and now Price gets his confidence. So with Ethan Price, that's gonna be his second in the course of two minutes. Yeah, just getting his hands in there. So they aren't letting that happen. They'll send Ethan back to the bench, and Casey Jones checks in. And that's a, always a bummer as a player. You know, you just see the ball going on a three-point, and then you, you foul, and you have to come out. Landek almost had it intercepted. There's Uchemme. 
Nice little bunny goes down. Yeah, a nice floater there. Nice soft touch through the lane. And if you're Eastern, you continue to play inside, inside, outside. Akhalis. Those bombing away threes. Why not? You have a 25-point lead. 25-point lead, and Taylor's inside on the key on him. And as Richardson takes a three of his own, again, that's now nine in a row they've missed as a team. Why not try? Why not practice the three, you know what I mean? Because there, there are going to be nights in the Big Sky season, knowing what the league looks like this year with all these transfers, all these guards in the portal, as Allegri is going to have one more, there are going to be nights where they need to win by the three. Yes, and they're, and they're going to have to be aggressive on that three-pointer too. And Jello Allegri will get one more at the line here. An incredible first half. And this made it 20 points and the foul. Yeah, that's just a difference in height right there. Able to back this guy down and just go right over him. Well, ever, ever since Multnomah switched to that man-to-man, -man, I mean, Eastern's more and more looking to go inside. And a rebound by Taron Johnson. No, can you believe he came off the bench? No, I, I I can't. I mean, maybe maybe if there's foul trouble, you know, I don't know who, how it's been going all season, but he was a, a big, big spark off the bench for Ronaldo. Well, considering he came into this block game with 18 blocks and shoots 65 percent, man, Casey Jones. I feel like they should start Johnson more. All right, 15:53 to go in this one. Uh, Casey Jones draws the foul up more on the other end of the break. 64 to 35 Eastern. At Eastern Washington University, biologists are harnessing gut microbes to build stronger bees. Composers are writing music to help us understand how salmon migrate. And Disability Studies works with Africana Studies to ensure villages halfway around the globe have access to clean water. An interdisciplinary education that gets real about the real world? That's the new thing. It isn't a tagline. It's a philosophy wrapped in red and white. It is Eastern Washington and you. Hey, Big Sky basketball fans, this is Coach David Riley from Eastern Washington Men's Basketball. This is Millie Nels from Eastern Washington. Hey, Big Sky basketball fans, this is Coach Jody Gleason. Hey, Big Sky basketball fans, this is Kassan Rouse from Eastern Washington Men's Basketball reminding you to purchase your tickets for the 2022 Big Sky Basketball Championship in Boise, Idaho. We can't wait to see all of our Eagle basketball fans cheering us on while we fight to win a Big Sky Championship. We'll see you in Boise. Go Eagles. We'll see you in Boise. Go Eags. We'll see you in Boise. Go Eags. We'll see you in Boise. Go Eags. Back here in Cheney, Eagles by 29 with 16 minutes to go. Greg Talbot and Mark Axton with you tonight here at Reese Court. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for Eastern. Uh, man, Texas Tech has quite the Eastern Washington swing. They got Gonzaga on Saturday and Eastern next week, Mark. Yeah, big game for Eastern there on the road. You know, big opponent in Texas Tech. They've done very good against uh, power conference schools this year with, you know, beating Wazoo. Um, they should have beat Colorado. Um, fumbled that one in the last minute but another opportunity um, to get a big win. Here's Casey Jones at the free throw line. He's got it on the back end. A 30 point lead and then, I'll, can you believe it, it's already here, December 30th. Big Sky play starts at Portland State. Big Sky play and, and, that, and that's what really matters in the Big Sky is, is, is the conference play. You wanna be able to protect your home court and, and get a good seating in that tournament. That's, you, you can so. win the league, but 
if you don't win the tournament, you're still not going to the tournament. That's now 11 consecutive missed three-pointers by Multnomah as a Cleese got it for two. Yeah, Eastern did a good job pushing the ball right there, get into a Cleese in transition. I'll tell you what's so funny, though, Mark, as you and I were here, man, what was it, maybe six weeks ago for the first, five, six weeks ago for the first game of the year, and we looked at this huge roster that had like 18, 19 guys on it. We had no idea what this team had. And now as we've watched them these last couple of nights against Colorado, against Washington State, in these last couple of games at home, it feels like David Riley has his eight-man rotation. And yes. this is a team that can win the Big Sky. I, I, I definitely think they have an opportunity to win the Big Sky. You know, and the fact that they're starting three freshmen, the, the, the future looks bright for Eastern. You know, that, that Big Sky play is different. It's a lot more physical, you know, Teams have watched film on you, so you got to bring you know other opportunities to score. And there's that first three pointer since the first two minutes for Multnomah. So, taking a look at what is going to be the big, what are going to be the big boys they're running up against uh, in the Big Sky. It is worth noting here, although how the great they've looked recently against Wazoo in Colorado as it's intercepted by Landek, we can't forget the last time they were at home, they did lose in not a close game to Southern Utah, who is expected to win the Big Sky. Yeah, Southern Utah, they they look really good. I mean, they have, what, 12 seniors, which is a rarity now, right now. Um, they're physical, they can shoot, and they get to the basket well. But Eastern played them hard. They, the couple times they came back, got within, I, I believe, four or three points that second half. So they, ha they have the runs in them. It, it's just a matter of just putting that piece together. And playing Texas Tech, those are the games that are going to get you ready for that Big Sky matchup. And a foul on the play that might be against Johnson again. We'll see. It was on Johnson, his third. That's going to be a problem for them. But I'll tell as we take a look at that one swatted away and Multnomah turned around and it was Unwillick here who drained the three. I gotta say, I feel like based on the way the Easterns played the last couple of games, I feel like if they ran up against Southern Utah again soon, that game might go a different way. Different way, and they didn't have a Cleese. Right. So, I mean, he, he's one of their leading scorers. You know, Steel Ventures has really stepped up these last games when Cleese was out, but you have him and you have a little, that's a little more experience, a little more physicality down low. Um, I, I do think it changes things. But if you're Eastern in this game, you want to make sure you take care of the ball. I mean, I know it's getting a little sloppy, but you want to be able to run your stuff through and work on plays. Allegri make it 23 points. Great game for Allegri. Got that rebound, was able to finish with his left hand. Now it feels like he's starting to lock it up for our player of the night tonight, but we'll see. Look at the move this. Here's Magnuson. Leaving it off, and they'll move it. Tap George, not a bad shot. And again, Eastern keeps getting opportunities for second chance points, and now they're passing through the zone with ease. Out to Allegri again. And now it'll be a third chance. The rebounding has been so good tonight for this team. It is, uh, they're getting good positioning. They're not letting up, once the shot's going up, they're getting their bodies into Multnomah and really trying to get angles to get those rebounds. I think Multnomah's game though is, they don't box out too heavily, they wanna get the ball and run. So they're looking to push it, they're not really getting into you on the box outs. Well that's exactly right. And it's worked for them a lot of this year. Like we said, coming into this game, six guys who average more than 10 points a game. A lot of the time it's from three, but those threes have just not been falling tonight. As it'll be on the freshman S-step, who's out of Portland, Oregon. Oh, yikes, Johnson's on the floor. Looks like he's got something wrong with his right. Is that his ankle? Is that his shin? Uh, looks like his ankle. Uh, his teammate fell into him on that charge and rolled it up. Well, that would be a bad, bad, bad news for Multnomah's Taron Johnson. Kind of feels like he's their best player, even if it's not reflected statistically. Yeah, I mean, he definitely does a lot changing, changing shots and posting up down low. Take a look at this again. So there's Estep, the freshman, who falls into him. Yeah. Went I mean, to his right just, ankle, yep. yeah. That's just tough. And now he's hobbling off. That's a tough sight. 
So he will, in all likelihood, end this game with 11 points, although it feels like he did more than that. Yeah, yeah, and he's not putting any pressure on that, so I don't think you'll see him come back, which no. is a bummer. He's not the he, night. He's done a fantastic job.